Welcome to the Jeff Knows Inc. Entrepreneurial Podcast with your host, Jeff Lopes. Jeff has over two decades experience as a serial entrepreneur, building brands like KimuraWare from his home basement to a multi-million dollar global brand that has sold over a quarter million pairs of boxing gloves. Jeff's here to educate, guide, and drive you on the process of bringing your ideas and dreams to reality with the inspiring stories from some of the top business minds. Welcome to episode number 80 of the Jeff Nozine Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes. Super excited to have on today, John Lee. John Lee is the co-founder and CEO of Wealth Dragons Group, one of the most successful entrepreneurs coming out of the UK, 5 million plus followers on social media. This guy has such incredible knowledge when it comes to business. Great individual, so humble, father, husband. Great conversation, everybody. Sit back and enjoy this one. We are live. We are live on the Jeff Nozine Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Lopes. Super stoked to have on. We just had a great little conversation to start. John Lee, what's up, brother? Um, Awesome, brother. Really, really good. Really good. Thanks for having me on the show. This is a a big honor, man. I mean, in in the business world, you've accomplished quite a bit, and we're going to go through quite a bit of your story. What are you up to now? I always let the audience... I like giving the audience an understanding of what you're up to business-wise now, what you're you're doing, where your ventures are, and then we'll start dipping in different parts of your story and and let the conversation flow. So what are you up to now? So I took my company public in 2019. And so my my vision now is to give self-development and the entrepreneur mindset to everybody in the world. So we we actually work on a a platform right now. It's called Wealth Dragons and um, it's it's an app as well. So people can download it and they can learn all all the entrepreneurial skills for free. It's all free. And um, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do because I, I spent my whole life learning. There's a difference between formal education and self-education. Yeah. And so, you know, I think formal education is important because it gives our, our, our kids the fundamentals, but I also think self-education is also important as well. So the soft skills, the business skills, the financial skills, the health skills, all those things I've just put into one place. And so, you know, our goal is to take that. My goal is to take it to a billion dollar valuation in the next 10 years. So maybe I look back 10 years from this and say, Hey, did we get to a billion dollar valuation? Um, so yeah, I'll, um, that, that's what we're working on and that's, that, that's what our focus is. So Wealth Dragon started, it officially started in 2019. Give me a little understanding. So no, 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 no it was older company than that. I mean, so we okay. started that over a decade ago. Oh, and it, it, but you went public in 2019. Correct. So with the brand and, and the actual platform, I was on it just playing around with it and stuff like that. You actually, the way I, I describe it or what I learned from it is you essentially put other coaches platforms on there as well it's a close it's a kind of an educational school for entrepreneurs um well it's two things so yeah. um i mean i mean a lot, a lot of people have got some great knowledge and some skills Let, let's say for example you know there's there's people in clubhouse where i'm sort of you know working with people right now uh, let's say they can do a program on public speaking skills that's one skill that that's not taught in school in a way that communication is important so i'll find someone who can do that they would create some kind of step-by-step training like a, like an e-learning course and they would put it into wealth dragons and people can go in they can they can consume that content for free that is awesome. you know so so, so i mean so, so, so it's not a membership based it's a totally free platform Free. You can go in there and you can watch people's content. And some people, and it depends on the creator. Some some of them give it for free. Some of them want to charge. But I always recommend that you know most of the stuff on there is you can you can go through a lot of the content and it's um you know really really good that you can just learn some things from people where you know you're extracting that person's knowledge in a way in a systematic way that gets results. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. So let's dive into the one thing you talked about there is educational level. Where's your educational level? Like, I mean, coming from you you were born in the UK. Was yeah. education a huge aspect of your upbringing with your parents? Was something they tried to push or or? Oh, or definitely. Yeah, my Chinese parents they always want your <laughs> son to be a doctor or an accountant or a lawyer. And fortunately, I'm I'm not smart enough any of that stuff. So I became an entrepreneur. <laughs> so did you actually from the kid? Did you any continue education, or you went directly as a young individual right to the entrepreneur? No, I mean I did go to university. I got a degree in animation. So I, I worked in the film industry for for many years in the games industry for many years. Oh, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, I was an animator. That's why I asked you about the DC stuff because yeah. I started friends that work in those those movies. My last, I mean, my, my one of my best friends animated the Hulk and the Avengers. Well, that's a pretty pretty cool little aspect yeah. there. How long yeah. did you work in that industry for? 
oh, about I would say four years ish, four or five years. Very good. Do mm. you do you ever plan of getting back as an entrepreneur in, into that any of those industries? Oh yeah, definitely. The I mean, industry I, is a massive industry right now, right? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, so one of the reasons why I go into film is I love film, but then you need money for film. So I thought, why not become an entrepreneur and then make my own film? So I just finished a feature film um, oh. it was a script. So you know, yeah. you know, watch this space. <laughs> That is interesting. That is interesting. Do you, do you mind me asking what kind of uh, genre or what kind of film or is it? You don't have to give details, but what area you're talking into? Without giving too much away, have you seen The Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's kind of one of those stories. It's a story of the underdog. It's a story of someone. It's basically based on my book. So if you've not read my book, it's called The Wealth Dragon Way. Yeah. So the book came out, but and so the film is about the book. Oh, I love that. I love mm. that. I love that. I love that. I love that. So... Growing up in the UK, I, I, I was reading a little little article on yourself that your your parents had a takeout restaurant and whatnot. Did you work in the restaurant? So in a way, you were brought up in an entrepreneurial family. That's a big water bottle. I love it. Oh, two liters. Yeah. You got to It's, it's um, <laughs> hydration. Um, yes and no. I mean, I was working in my mom's Chinese takeout as a dishwasher, but okay. it wasn't really a. It's more of a a graft business you've got to put a lot of hard work into it to get the results yeah and so um yeah we are not i wouldn't say an entrepreneurial company but def definitely you know self-employed self-employed yeah which is i mean it, a lot of i mean a lot of our reality is is a lot of our ancestors and whatnot were essentially entrepreneurs but exactly you said they're more self on um, um, self entrepreneurs self-employed because they would work in the business for their whole life right so with yourself when you started venturing in what age were you? Did you actually get your first venture and actually start your as an entrepreneur? Oh God, um, I'm asking me to think back now. <laughs> so I started entrepreneurship when I was 21 years old. That's when I started to really learn about you know education. This and I found about this whole thing about self development. Um, and then I obviously went to university. And I remember my friend gave me this book it's called Rich Dad Poor Dad. So I read the book and he talked about you know the difference between active income and passive income. So in 2005, you know, when I was on 24, 25 years old, I was really kind of, you know, taking action and that, you know, cause you spend a long time studying, but then that's just procrastinating. And then you start taking action. So I was, I'd already had four years of like, you know, uh, like self-development knowledge rather than formal education. Yeah. And so my first venture I went into was, was, was property. And so, um, you know, I made my first million at the age of 27 through real estate. And, you know, whenever, and you probably remember this in 2008, when we had the sh yeah, yeah. crash, that's when I was buying a lot of the properties, you know, when everyone was selling, I was buying, right. Because I knew that I could buy them like at half the price because no one wants the properties only to realize that the properties would increase in price over time. So, you know, that, that's, that, that was a big thing for me because, you know, I learned about if you want to make money, you want to be successful All successful people have assets. So things that increase in value, things that, and not only assets, I learned about income producing assets. So you buy something that not only grows in value, but pays you an income um, as you hold this asset. So, you know, I started doing that in 2005, started, you know, start investing in property. So that was my first venture. Yeah. So are you still actively in the real estate market as well? Uh, yes, I, I, I still buy. I'm not as active as, as, I, as I used to, but you know, I did, because I'm, I'm known for that field. A lot of the agents know me, a lot of the investors know me. So, so I'm still- Opportunities always come to you. Yeah, I you know. I, I'll, I'll still buy properties. You know, if they come on with the good deals, I'll, I'll, I'll buy them, but it's not my sort of main focus. But that's where you should put money. If, if, if people are listening to this, like where do I put my money? Definitely start investing in property. Now that I mean, that's something we talked about before we went on air. That's something I'm very passionate about is is the property, and exactly what you said is the passive income from it because I I focus on real I focus on the vacation properties, hmm. where I find the vacation rentals is is a great asset. You're not looking at somebody dwelling in your in your in your property for seven eight months without paying. With that aspect of of the um, real estate part, what advice would you give to a young entrepreneur? I mean, I understand how I started, but what advice would you give to a young entrepreneur looking to getting into the real estate and not having the initial funds or something like that to start? What steps would they get to, to get to their first property? So do, do what I did. I didn't have the money. Yeah. <laughs> so here's one thing I learned is that when you find the deal, the money will find you. So one of the first deals I bought was like, it was on the market for 185,000. I bought it for 85,000 and I sold it for 185,000. 
So I made a hundred grand, like, you know, just, just by using other people's money. Yeah. So I would find investors, investors would give me the deal. And this one lady gave me 85,000 and I bought that property and I paid her the money back with the interest once I saw the property and what's left became my capital. So there's never a lack of finances. There's only a lack of creativity. Right? You've got to be creative when you start, you know, looking for this stuff. Yeah, I love that. With your current company, um, Wealth Dragons, do you have investor, like you said, you're, you're, you're publicly now, um, with that brand and when that company, where is the next steps for that company? You said you want to get into the billion. Is there other avenues you want to bring in as revenue with different areas or different focuses with that company? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's a whole ecosystem. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, 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 I mean, that's just the first part of it. If you kind of, you know, any business, like, especially if it's technology, you know, which is ours, it takes an app, right? So people can go, they can download, if they want to learn public speaking, type in public speaking, they want to learn about online marketing, they want to learn about sales skills, whatever it is, you can just go and just look for it. And it's, it's just very readily available. Some, some of the um, instructors charge, some of them give it for free, right? But now you have a choice, you see? Yeah. So, um, you know, we have people like, you know, Kevin Harrington on there, you have a, a Robin Sharma, you've got the Jim Quicks on there, some of the you know, biggest names in the, in the self-development world. And so for me, it's about my goal is to make this education available to all, right? Because sometimes when you, you know, you want to learn, you have to pay, I mean, you pay a lot of money for a degree, like a business degree, like a hundred grand. Yeah. But if you want to self-education, it's equally as expensive. So what if you can't afford that? Well, why don't I just make this education available to everybody? You know, and some people will take it, some people won't, but you know, that's my mission. Like I, it was never taught to me at school. And I thought, why don't I make this education available to everybody in the world right now? Yeah. I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, John, if there's two types of, and we're going to dive into that. There's two types of mentors. There's direct and indirect mentors. And, and sometimes the most valuable are the indirect mentors is, the, is from a book or, or, or a platform like yourself is learning. And that person becomes a mentor to you not focusing on them as a mentor, but actually learning their process and learning from them. So I, I appreciate that platform. In your process, have you had mentors along the way? Oh yeah. My first mentor was Ying Tan. And you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a funny story, Jeff. I, yeah. I, 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 I had to pay money to have him mentor me. Guess how much he charged me? 10, 10,000 pounds for two days. I didn't have the money. I sold my car. <laughs> you know, when I sold my car, my, my ex-girlfriend, well, my girlfriend at the time, yeah. um, she said to me, oh, it's a scam and you shouldn't do this. And, you know, like it's a waste of money. But that's the funny thing when people, these people at that time that say it's a scam, it's a waste of money. When you finally make it, they then ask you, well, how did you do it? So um, I did have a lot of mentors along, a lot along the way. And, you know, I think people should invest in their education. But obviously, if you've got the means to do that, great. If not, that's why I created a platform. So there's so many people like, obviously, if you're working with people one to one, there's only so many people you can work with one to one. Yeah. And I have five million people that follow me on social media. I'm like, oh, my God, I feel so bad that I can't serve everybody one to one. Why not just build something, take all my mentors, take all my, you know, people have given me advice and just, hey, say, like, learn from the people that taught me. Like there's a guy called Vincent Wong um, and he wrote a book called Property Entrepreneur. It's a best-selling book. And he's a guy that taught me a lot of this property stuff, like moving on. So, you know, I thought, why don't we just extract that information from his head, put it into a place where people can consume it? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I'm going to put, uh, this is now with yourself. You're obviously based in the UK. How much time have you spent in the US and Canada and travel and 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 educational, like, like you said, public speaking, all that stuff? Is that a big part of you as well, the public speaking aspect? Obviously, in the last year has changed, but was that a big aspect of your life? Yeah, I mean, because you know, being an author, people read the book and then they say, Can you do a keynote? And I have to fly to like Singapore or Malaysia or Dubai or Australia or New Zealand. Um, Vegas, I, I, did, I did a keynote in Vegas and I haven't done one in Canada yet, but I visit Canada. That's why I say it's a beautiful place because you got amazing Chinese food there. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you were in Canada? Uh, about three years ago. So I took my parents Which there. part of Canada? Um, I think it was is it Toronto, yeah, of Toronto, world. and then we went to Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah. yeah we went yeah. up and it was about a three hours journey and then we took a plane to, to Vegas. And we, uh, I told my parents to see Celine Dion in concert. So, yeah. That is another Canadian. She's a Canadian. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing show. Amazing show. Yeah. So with your aspect in Toronto, have you, do you have any family in Canada? No, no. Okay. no. Are you, are you you're, you're married? Yeah, I'm married, yeah. How many children? Do you have any children? One. One, one daughter. She's a two and a half right now. <laughs> so she's a little one still. 
Oh, yes. How, how is it? They always say uh, a daughter, daughter. I had my, my first child was a daughter. How is, how does that impact your life? Oh God. It's, it, you know, it, I, all my friends who had kids, they always say to me, you know, you says, I truly understood what the word unconditional love means now, you know, being a father, that. like I before I was like, okay, we're flying to Australia. Let's go and spend a month there. Right. That's what my schedule would be like. Yeah. But now when my, you know, my publicist, my manager says to me, Hey, John, we want someone to go fly, fly to New Zealand or fly to Singapore. And I say to them, okay, in my schedule, can I get there and back in 24 hours? If I can, it's a yes. If I can't, then I'm not doing the gig. Right. So, so because now it's like, I want to get there and come back and spend time with my family. Or if they can't do that, I say, okay, well, I need my tickets to fly my entire family out. So they'll pay for all first class flights, business class flights, you know, for a week. And then I'll, I'll take my family with me. But it's not so good traveling so much with the kids because, you know, it just messes up the body clock. But yeah, I mean, it's in terms of like priorities, that is like, for, for example, I always take my daughter to school every morning. Like I, I haven't, you know, I've had nannies before and, and, you know, people to, to do that stuff, but I want to do that. I want to spend that personal time. I want to be seeing her coming out of the nursery with this big smile saying, daddy, 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 look. And you know, that, that I, like those moments, those inches when they're growing, I don't want to miss that. Even though I could hire a nanny and say, hey, you know, I'll take care of my kid, but I don't, I don't think that's taking ownership, you know? So it's a lot more work. Of course it is. Um, and my wife, she's amazing at like just taking care of my, you know, of my daughter, she's just like, just so supportive of all the things I do. So I try and like you say, you, you're three till seven, that's that eating time, you know, that this is my time with, with, with her. So it's, it's like, what matters is, is just seeing them grow. That's what matters. I got, I got a smile from ear to ear. I, got, I, I love everything you're saying. Cause you're saying it with such glee, like you're just, you're glowing inside talking right now, which I love so much because there's a few things you said there. It is something I'm very, very passionate about is dinner time. And as your daughter gets older, and if you do have more children, that dinner aspect of like my kids are 12 and 14 and being mm -hmm. able to have an open conversation with them during a meal is so precious as they get older, because mm -hmm. especially with pandemics, with, with virtual learning, there's so many areas as a parent, you have to be actively aware of what's happening from mental health and other issues. Oh, so yeah. being able to have that open dialogue and conversation, be able to be around, there's nothing more precious for a family to sing around a meal and just having an open conversation and smiling yeah. and talking. So I appreciate that aspect. And there's one little stat that a lot of people aren't aware of that I've learned years back is, and, and I think you understand it so clearly. And I appreciate that as a father is 80%, they say 80% of the face time you have with your children is before the age of 18. So if a lot of parents understood that stat and, and, and appreciate, like you said, it's so easily to focus still on growing your company to that billion dollars and all that stuff and spending a month here and spending a month here, but you're not going to allocate or get back that time you have with your children. And I appreciate how you're saying like, exactly, I'm in the same situation where we could have other people assisting us and helping us, but I still want to be hands-on and be able to do that. And I appreciate picking my kids from school. And I appreciate it's, it's that mindset is a lot of people have to reshift their mindset where I always hear a lot of dads like, Oh, I, and I, and I hate this. It's like, Oh, I got to go pick up my kids. No, you get to pick up your kids, having that mindset and that yeah. shift of understanding that I don't have to be home for dinner. I get to be home for dinner. Mm -hmm. And I think people have to appreciate that. Are your parents still around with us? Yeah. Yeah. I'm still around. Yeah. Are they, they, they live look close to you? Live close no, to they you? live about three hours away from here, but they do come down occasionally, you know, yeah. uh, just, I mean, you know, during the whole Christmas uh, period and, and I mean, right now it's a bit hard because in the UK, but every Christmas they normally come down and we spend time together. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you talk to your parents on a regular basis over the phone? And stuff? Um, yeah. I mean, we FaceTime quite a lot. You know, they want to see, you know, you know my daughter. daughter. So yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's, it's another aspect too is, is is having the opportunity to spend the time with your grandparents and stuff like that. Because, like I said, the time is limited and something we can't get back. So I appreciate that as well. well well, that's why I took them to Canada. You know, every year we, well, before lockdown, we would be a family trip in one location. And so, you know, it'd be Canada and it'd be Vegas and it'd be like, you know, Bali. And so, you know, I, I do make it like at least two weeks in that year. Like I've got that precious time. I pay for everything, I love you know, that. and it's just, that it, it's important. It's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Family is obviously, I mean, just by the way you're talking, family is a huge part of you. How long have you been married for now? Oh, about seven years now. Yeah. Time flies. Yeah. I've been, I'm, I just passed 17. How, wow. how, old you, how old are you, John? How old am I? How, 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 old, how old do you think I am? <laughs> See, it's hard to tell with Oriental people. You always look so young, right? So I'm going by your, your achievements 
I would say you're in your in your late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. But you, yeah. But you so but but you've been married for a very short time. And you have a very young daughter. So I, it, it all depends on career wise, right? I would say late 30s. How old are you? Yeah, uh, 39. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. So, so you're you're born. Uh, you're four. I'm four years older than you, so <laughs> not not too far. So we we grew up in the same era. So now with the UK, growing up in the UK, cultural wise, how was that? I mean, was, was is it very like I know in Toronto, Canada, when you came to Toronto, Canada, you'll see it's a massive multicultural society where you want you want Chinese food, you got Chinese food. You want Italian food, you got Italian. Food. You, I grew up in a high school where. It was like every race, like I, I just had a gentleman on, um, Stephen Harris, I mean, great individual from Nigeria on our podcast. And I grew up with a bunch of guys from Nigeria. Like you, you had such a great mix of culture and, and understanding. How was it growing up in the UK? Uh, UK was, you know, um, I mean, the, the, the little town that I grew up in was um, was quite, quite tough. Actually. I was a, the only Chinese kid at school, you know, so of course there was a lot of uh, racism. There was a lot of uh, bullying um but that's just how things were back then you know so it, it, it was it was tough i mean I, it, it was something that but it, i guess it makes you tougher it makes you stronger right 100%. i mean it shapes the person you are today and people always say to me like you know, if you could change anything what would you change i wouldn't change anything never you know because the things that happened happened for a reason to shape the person you are today i love that i love that mm. i love that that's one thing i always say john is is everything in life or every, every person in your life it's, it's funny we was having this conversation yesterday with an individual and we were talking about individuals and their purpose in your life. And, 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 and this individual, they came to me and we we're just having this conversation where they had a friend for almost 10 years. And for some reason, his friend just stopped talking to them and moved on. And they were like, well, they're trying to understand what happened. And my understanding, what I explained to that them was everybody has a purpose in your life, whether they're in your life for a day, whether you're at a grocery store and they just pass by you with a smile and they just cheered up your day. Everybody has a purpose in your life. And I agree. And I agree with every moment in your life has a purpose to, it's just how much you take that purpose or that moment to learn or educate yourself or to, to improve yourself from it. So I appreciate that as well. So as everything is going, how, okay. In the UK, are you guys still on lockdown? Yeah. Full lockdown right now. Yeah, that's what we are in Toronto. We just uh, what we officially started yesterday in Ontario. They call it a state of emergency. <laughs> they and I, yeah, I, it's it's incredible. So as an entrepreneur, you're seeing a lot of small businesses struggle and stuff like that. Where's your mindset with small businesses? And 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 I have my mindset with advice. But what advice would you give people that are struggling right now? Because the small the small business industry is is really struggling. This is a global pandemic. When I'm talking about global, I'm talking about the business world. A lot of people are just struggling and losing their businesses from restaurants to gyms. Like that's what we deal with. We, we deal with 1800 gyms. And once again, all the gyms are closed. So where and what advice as a, a successful entrepreneur would you give small businesses at this moment? Well, I'll tell you, I was one of those businesses that got hit. One of my businesses is an events company. So we run a lot of events, a lot of conferences. Yeah. And of course, now you're not allowed to run events. And even if you can run events, you've got to be like 10 meters apart. I'm exaggerating there, by the way. Yeah. You know, but you've, you know, it doesn't really work as an event. So my advice to all business owners is you've got to think about the pivot, right? So you've got to think about, okay, if I can't do that, what can I do? People think about things, what they can't do. Or, okay, what can you do and how can you adapt it? So, of course, we naturally, um, you know, I never thought you could run it. Like, for example, this weekend, we have an event. We have over 10,000 people registered for one of our events this weekend. So to put an event of that scale on in real life would, would cost a fortune. Now I can jump on Zoom and have all these people come. And then they, they you know, they listen to our, our keynotes and our speakers. And it's great. And it still works. So you've got to look at where the value add is and where the pivot is. Because, you know, it took us quite a few months to actually realize, well, actually, maybe events are not going to come back anymore and maybe we should do something else. And so luckily I was able to switch that pretty fast. And I remember the first time my, my promoter, my manager said to me, you know, what, John, you, you, you got to run this show. And I said, why? Because if you don't, all these people are going to start asking for refunds for the tickets. And I said, ah, I don't know. You know, and his name's Craig. And I said, I don't know about this, Craig. He's like, I don't, I don't think people get the same experience. They, they, they'll not value it. And, and I'm not sure. I said, John, just try it and see how it works. I'll tell you, we put it on. And I never thought people would stay live for like 12 hours watching me on the screen. And they did. And that's when I had one of those epiphany moments. Like, oh, my God. Like, why did I not do this earlier? And so it just pivoted that entire, my entire events business is all fully online now. All of it. After 10 years. 
of doing physical flying around. The world. I don't have to fly anywhere anymore. I can just stay here. And, you know, my daughter, I can see my daughter during the breaks and play jigsaw with her and come back up and then carry on the present. So it's just amazing that I'm able to, um, I guess, blessed to see that in every crisis is an opportunity. And I always say this in my interviews, there's a, in a word in Chinese called Wei Qi, and it's made up of two characters. Right? And if word spells crisis, if you put the two words together, if you take off one word, this word spells danger. And if you take off, if you put the other word, this word spells opportunity, right? So danger, opportunity, both words spell crisis. That means in every crisis situation, there's an opportunity. So can you see the opportunity? Like in 2008, I saw the opportunity. Everyone was selling, right? There was mortgage products out there where you can buy a house and refinance the next day. So I decided to take advantage, not take advantage, but be able to have the knowledge to be able to utilize that. And, and I guess when um, success is when preparation meets the opportunity, right? You've heard that many, many times. Yeah. So, you know, for, for years I've been sort of, you know, uh, practicing, if you will. Now with Clubhouse come out, I thought, oh my God. Like people say, John, like every, every room I go into, you're always a moderator. How do you, how do you do this? It's a natural thing for me now. I spent 15 years honing my voice, honing my talents, sharpening the saw. So when something like Clubhouse comes along, I can just go on there and bang and just talk. You know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things where like, don't, don't be in freeze mode. Like, oh my God, this has happened. And don't like focus on, okay, the government's going to bail me out or the, 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 or the election or this and that. No, you got to create your own economy, right? If you don't do it, no one else is going to do it. So make sure you do it. <laughs> look for that opportunity. Look for that silver lining. Look at the thing, like ask yourself, what am I not seeing right now? When I asked myself that question, I thought, oh my God, how am I going to get all these people? Like, like how, what am I not seeing right now? Yeah. Right. And the moment you start asking yourself the question, you'll start to find the answer. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's constantly like when we went on air prior, I was explaining my, my first business, one of my, my main companies, Kamora, where is, 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 uh, we do sell directly to wholesale to gyms and this business, 15 years, we've reshifted, we re-strategize this company four or five times. So during the pandemic is one opportunity I had to reshift. And also with the other company, True Blue Homes, vacation rentals, during the pandemic, STA short-term accommodations were all shut down in Ontario, Canada here. So we had to reshift and I had to find a loophole in the system to allow renters to come in as well during that period. So you're constantly learning how to reshift and, and you find opportunities, right? So I appreciate that aspect. So when you did, when was the first event you did live virtual? So this is gonna be your second big one? No, this or oh, the first one would have been in March. So it was right, right. It was right when the pandemic yeah. really started. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, because I, I just I just finished my tour out in Australia. We flew back and landed in January, and that literally the day I flew back, that's when we had a net, like like basically things were locking down. So you're looking at around March 18, 17, give or take. Yeah, because yeah. when when you do events, you have to plan in advance, right? You yeah, can't just do an event and then do it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a three or four month, um, you know, planning. And so, like, as we were planning it, like, we did our lowest, like, okay, I said, okay, I'll do it only if we test it. So instead of having all these people, let's do it with a small group and see how it goes, yeah. right? Because if they all start complaining, if they didn't get a lot of value, if they didn't learn anything, they didn't, get, they didn't enjoy it, then I'm not going to do it, right? And so, luckily, it turned out okay. <laughs> and how many, of you, how many have you done so far? What, virtual events till now? Yes. Yeah, over over 100. Oh, are you, since March? Yep. Wow. Okay. Yeah, we, we, I didn't expect so, that so, number. Yeah. So now we do approximately two to three a week now. Interesting. No, that's not just me, by the way. I have, I have a whole, no, you know, I have, I have a lot of instructors that do things. It's not just me. I mean, I do the, the big ones. So for example, I have an instructor for real estate. I have an instructor for public speaking. I have an instructor for, you know, stock trading. So I, I don't do them on myself. Very, very cool. Yeah, but we've, cool. we've done over a hundred since uh, lockdown. Very cool. And this is a plat. This is all through a platform. This is not through your wealth dragons, is it? No, this is a different platform. So, what's, so what's the platform dragons? called? What's the platform called? First off, well, our platform is called Wealth Dragons. But yeah, when yeah. You put these, but well, the app's called Wealth Dragons. So it is through the same app. Yeah, yeah. So if you go to App Store or Apple Store, just type in Wealth Dragons, you can download it and you can you can see all the things on there. Yeah, very, very, very cool. So, what's your next? When's your next event? Uh, this weekend. <laughs> now, who do you have guest speaking on there? Like, for give me, give me like an Oh, we have so, a, lot, a lot of my friends. We have people like uh, Elena Cardone, she's a good yeah. friend of mine. We have uh, like a Shannon Lecter, the call through a rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. Uh, we have like a Gary Henderson, a Vincent Wong. We'll have a, a Jim Quick. 
Um, he's for those of you who don't know Jim, he 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 you know he's done a lot of consulting with uh, Elon Musk and uh, yeah, the yeah. Oprahs of the world and some of the big big time actors um, as well. So yeah, I mean yeah, we got some big names coming up. Big names coming up. That is that is awesome. So as 2021 hit and. I mean, this is the reality is because I, I find 2020, 2021 just blendeth right through as an entrepreneur. Mm. You just, you don't look at the day you to continue. And, and one thing I always say is I hate new year's resolutions because if you can't have a resolution any time of the year, why would you plan it for, or plan it for one particular day? And I'm finding, as I'm talking to a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of people thought 2021 would be a restart, a refresh moment. Mm. And and that's it's just the mental aspect of if looking at a day saying, okay, 2020 was a tough year, 2021, we're starting fresh. Reality is it's not going to be fresh. We're still going through the cell pandemic. We're still going through dark times. And and that that original energy for the first week, two weeks of the year is slowly starting to disappear from a lot of entrepreneurs. What advice would you give besides the shifting? mentally and and just spiritually or why not what advice would you give an entrepreneur that right now two weeks into 2021 and they're like wow this is we're still on lockdown the world is still the u.s is going through haywire right now like what advice would you give a young entrepreneur that's right now struggling to understand the gasp of 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 that whole like that whole reshift they had that in mind of the reshift what, what advice would you give them well i will always say that you know, uh, I think, you know, 2021, it, it is a mental reset, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, people see it as a brand new year, brand new start. They kind of give themselves permission to do something. Yeah. But for the young entrepreneurs, listen to this. I mean, really, like you should be having three, six, nine, 12 uh, month goals right? at basically every quarter. I love that. That's right. right. Because like, you know, for these three months, for example, these three months, right. One of my goals, like Clubhouse, I want to reach like, I want to try and get to 100,000 people following. Right. So that's why that's my that's three months goes. Why do I want to do that? Because I know when I hit a hundred thousand people following, I've already connected with you know some. I mean, you've you've heard me on there, yeah. some of the big shots, you know, in that room, and and now now we're doing collaboration deals. So I know that the bigger the following grows, the more distribution grows, the more the network grows, and ultimately the more impact and income that grows. Yeah. So that's why I'm spending so much time in there right now. Let's 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 talk, let's dive into that quickly before we went on the air. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually. We actually pre-record like six, seven weeks in advance, but I'm actually going to be airing your podcast in a couple of weeks. So I want to bump it up with clubhouse. It's such it's, it's, we went on there and, 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 and as an entrepreneur, you, like I said, we, before we went on here, we were talking a little bit about it as a new app, you can get very lost with time and distracted with time. And you have to put a value on your time as an entrepreneur. Where do you see the value besides the networking aspect, which is the massive, where do you see the value of that app and where do you see that app continue to grow over the next, say, three months, six months, 12 months? Not even for yourself, but as an app in general, helping entrepreneurs. Well, for example, uh, okay, let's talk about how it all, like you follow me on social media, but you, I would never have found out about you if you were not on the app. The whole reason why we're having this conversation right now is because you were on the app and I was on the app. We shared some content. You said, hey, John, you asked a question and you said, I'd love to have you on my podcast. Then you sent me a message and which I didn't see because I get thousands of people send me messages. And, and then you were present. You were there again and again and again and again and again. And the more I started to see you, I thought, oh, this guy is actually quite consistent. And so then I, I went into your profile to check out your Instagram and sure enough, there were all your DMs. Right. And then I replied to it and you said, you know, can I have you on my show? I said, sure. Here's my assistant's details. And then she set this up and now we're talking. Yeah. Right. So that's the power of for like for you as an entrepreneur, being able to reach, you know, the people that you want to reach to get on your show. Right. But it's also like for me is reaching like, for example, like, you know, I've got I, I just finished, like I said, a, a feature film and um, movie script. You know, like I'm good. And there's people out there who I've met who's in the movie industry, in Hollywood, um, you know, VCs. Uh, and so that all the elements are there. So it's finding out how, what they want and how they can help. I'll give you another example. So there was a big celebrity on there just now. I won't mention her name, but you, you probably know who she is. Yeah. But she reached, she just sent me a message saying, John, these, these big deals that you're investing into, can you, know, can, can you get me contact into this big one that's happening? So again, I can't mention anything now. Yeah. But she sent me that message and she would have, we would never be speaking if we hadn't have been on that platform. And so now that, you know, if, if I'm able to make an introduction and she gets to be able to invest in that company and then so can I, you see? 
So this is where, I mean, a lot of people are going there, they're selling courses and selling consulting, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just their business model. For me, I have a business model that does do that, but I don't use Clubhouse for that. I use Clubhouse for, you know, connecting with the right people. And, and I go there to learn as well. Where, when were you first, this is such a new, such a new app. When were you first introduced and how were you introduced to it? Okay, so I'm part of this, um, I guess, network of um, all the top sort of, uh, uh, I guess, keynote speakers, events companies in the UK. And I got this message saying, oh my God, join this clubhouse, secure your, secure your username. I said, what do you mean? Also, why is everyone blowing up about it? This was December the 27th. I uh, Sorry, no, December the 26th, I got the message. I didn't, and then they kept talking about it. I'm like, okay, maybe I should go and have a look. So I went so to try and get only, my name. It's only a couple of weeks then. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so then I checked my name. I said, oh, let's see if I can get at John Lee, because normally you can't get at John Lee because it's such a common name, right? Yeah. So unfortunately, John Lee's gone. I thought, okay, so what else can I get? John underscore Lee. At least I got that one, right? <laughs> so I got John at John underscore Lee. So I got my domain name and then I waited maybe a day or so. Then I eventually get an invite into there. So I download the app, I get an invite and I go in and then people start talking about, oh my God, what, what, what's people talking? What's all this about? So I put myself onto mute and I just started the more, and I just shut it down like this is ridiculous. And then uh, it wasn't until, because obviously it's Christmas time. Uh, December the 29th, 30th, around that range. I just woke up one day and I literally sat in the office and I just, okay, let's see what this thing's about. I turned it on and I saw this thing about, um, you know, how to win a million dollar business. I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. So I went into that, you know, not thinking anything. And then some, some, and then I get this notification, you have been invited to be a speaker. I'm like, this is weird. So I click it and now I'm on stage and then they're asking me questions like, hey, John, we just saw you on this platform. Welcome to the platform. We know you're really big on social media. You've, you've done all these great things. Can I ask you a question? I'm like, whoa. <laughs> no, and that, that is, that's when I thought, and then I was on there for about 10 hours asking, answering questions. That The same day? Yeah. Yeah, it was on all day. You know, and I was like, Jesus. And so, and then, I just, then, then you know how it works. Then, then, then you get sucked into the platform. <laughs> So where, where, I mean, obviously at your, when you get to your level of social media, I'm assuming a lot of your content runs is run by your team. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I create the content, but they edit it and things and they'll post it and yeah. do all the sort of scheduling. So you still do your own DMS or no? Yes and no. Like, um, for example, if I'm, if I'm on clubhouse at that time, so when you send that DM, yeah. then I would, cause I'm live then I went to DM and I'll see it. But some, but most of the times I'll, I'll have, um, you know, my team will sometimes check it. If like the general ones are the ones that are in the, the primary box, I'll check. So there's three, um, you've got the primary, you've got the general and you've got the re requested messages. Yeah. So there's actually three lots of messages. So I'll personally handle the primary ones. Yeah. And my team will maybe do the, the general, or sometimes I'll do the primary in general, but my team will go into the um, um, sort of requested this messages. Is awesome. This is awesome. I got, I got two questions. I don't want to take too much of more of your time because I'll probably see you on Clubhouse later on today. I got okay. two questions for you. And, I, and, and usually we have an open conversation. And I think we learned quite a bit about you today. Two questions I always try to ask all our guests. If something were to happen to you today, John, in a few simple words, how would you want to be described or remembered by your closest loved ones and friends? That's a good question. I mean, for me, I always have this word impossible, right? And if you put the comma there, I impossible. That's how I'm, I'm remembered as a source of inspiration and that light for people in the darkest hour. I love that. I love that. Very, very simple. Now, going back to something we talked about and we had a little passion about at the beginning, superpower. If you had one superpower, what would it be? And oh. <laughs> that's a good one superpower um i'd love to be able to stop time or freeze time or control time yeah uh, i think that, that i would love very, that because be then i can re-experience the moments again and again and again and just go back and I, I'm, I'm fascinated by the way with like uh, movies that have time travel in it i'm just so fascinated with it and um, yeah, I just wish that, wow, like sometimes like, and isn't that the thing? Doesn't matter how rich or doesn't matter if you're Warren Buffett or Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, like, you know, every hour that goes by is gone forever. Every minute, every second. I, I, I agree with that. It doesn't matter who you are, what stature you are. I always, I, I, I have a, a something I always say with everybody as well. It's like, I mean, we all have 24 hours in a day. How do we utilize it and, and how we take it in is is is, is going to change how we are as an individual tomorrow right so yeah we i mean that's one thing which is so precious and a lot of people don't understand that and and i i try to explain that to a lot of individuals 
is you can get back time. That's what we talked about your, your parents. And I appreciate you going on vacation with them and, and spending that time with them, that allocated time, because I always hear a lot of individuals and friends of mine, and they'll come back to them and they're, and they're one of their relatives or a family member will pass away. And they're like, oh, I wish I had more time. And that just angers me inside because you had time when they were alive. Yeah. Why didn't you? I'm 43, John. And every morning on my way to the office and every night when I'm away home, I call my mom. Before I go to bed, I call my mom. My parents, I'm luckily live only about half an hour from us. And I still go down two, three times a week just to have a coffee or five minutes with my dad. Because I understand and I quickly understood that seeing a lot of my close friends losing closer relatives, like time is so precious. And you're not going to get that back. So appreciate the time you have with your loved ones and your family and, and all that. One little thing we're going to dive into before we go. Two more seconds is your wife. You said you have a very supportive wife. How is your wife involved in your businesses at all, or is she more just a supportive angle? Well, I mean, she's, I mean, she, she did have a good, uh, I mean, a company that was doing well, really, really well. Right. And uh, closed one of the biggest contracts. And, you know, when we had my daughter, we made it, you know, a conscious decision that, you know, we want to be the ones bringing our kids up, not a nanny, not a, yeah. you know, an old pair. Like we want to be the people. I mean, that may change when we have more kids. I mean, but I still want to be as, as actively involved as I can, Yeah. you know, to, to, you know, I guess, those magical moments that, that you just don't want to forget. So, you know, with my wife now, she's now become full-time mom uh, and she does support me, you know, in, in my company and, and, you know, give suggestions more of a, like an advisor level, if you will. Yeah, um, yeah. But, you know, she, she's, I mean, I think being a mom is the hardest job in the world. It's harder than, than become an entrepreneur. It really is. You got kids like, so when you listen to this, my God, like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like a business all those hard times. It's like that just when you've got it. Okay. Another thing happens. We got another thing happens. And yeah, you know, I just, I, I'm so thankful to my wife to, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do if she didn't support at, at that level. I love it. I love it. Um, this has been an absolute pleasure. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate your success and you're very humble. Like just talking to you, you're just a humble person. You could, you just, Anybody that's going to watch us and just by our conversation for the last 45 minutes, you're a very humble person, which it's very easily to get out of that when you get to a level of stature. So being humble, being a present father, which is so, uh, to me, that, that probably means more than anything of our whole conversation today. I appreciate, and I appreciate what you've done. And I appreciate you, like I said, giving back in a platform where you understand the value of education and, and having mentors and you're giving that to everyone on a level where everybody could accept and use even if they're not at that level where they could afford it they could still benefit from it so i appreciate that and i appreciate you thank you so much anything you want to say to our audience before we go i just want to say um you know anything that just putting out there make sure that you listen to it and, and thank you for you for for taking these these amazing guests that you've got with the, this amazing information and, and using that as a platform for good and educating people. I think we need more people like you to be able to extract this knowledge to help that next generation. And, you know, we talk about generational wealth. What about generational education? You know, that can, that can stand the test of time and really to make a dent in how people are educated, not just in school and school and university is important, but also the other side of that as well, that continuing education. I think that's what's, what's important. So thank you for having me as a guest and give me the, the, the platform to share my message and, and, and for helping other people do this as well. So I appreciate I that. Yes. I love it. I love it. And I, and one last thing is I, I appreciate how, like you said, continuing education is fantastic. And, you, and there's tons of life lessons you'll learn with the actual structured universities and colleges, but there's a lot of aspects when it comes to our educational system that don't prepare people for the real world. And I think your platform is doing that from, like I, I'm, a, I'm an advocate where I'm always saying, sales is is one of the most important tactics people should learn and something that they should be teaching in school, sales and, and public speaking and all these things. So you're giving a platform for people to learn this that even even high school kids, like parents, if any parents are listening to this, going to your platform for their even their children or 14, 15 year old, there's probably tons of knowledge they could build while they're in high school that'll prepare them for the rest of the world and the rest of their life. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, thank you, everybody. Bye for thank now. You. That's a wrap for today. I want to thank our guest, John Lee, for taking time out of his incredibly busy schedule to be a guest on our podcast. Truly honored to have a entrepreneur with such a an impressive resume to be on our podcast. If you guys enjoy this podcast as much as I did, please help us spread the word. Tell your friends, tell your family. 
We're trying to build something special here. Leave a review. Five stars would be absolutely amazing. We love spending time reading our reviews. Until next week, guys, keep moving forward. Mm-hmm.